So one thing we haven't seen <coughs> in the circuit yet is any filtering. So we've got uh, our system as we've constructed it so far. Uh, what they're going to tell us here is we've got no, remind us here, we've got no method to uh, get rid of dirt, showing some dirt entering the system by whatever means. Uh, and there, our oil is getting contaminated, so we need to filter. Uh, to filter in the high pressure drive loop is impractical because filters that can take the kind of pressures here, thousands of PSI, uh, aren't generally reliable or affordable. So um, they're going to show us where they typically, a few different places they typically will filter. They're going to show us where they put a partial flow filter. They're going to, all these filters are going to be in the charge system in the low, uh, in the low pressure, or medium pressure part of the circuit. And they're calling this partial flow filter because what's coming out of the charge pump uh, comes up here and goes through the filter en route to the charge check valves to replenish the system, regardless of whether we're in forward, neutral, or reverse. But any of the flow that isn't going through the charge check valves, it's going over the charge relief, is not getting filtered. So this is, in fact, a, a partial flow system, and this is quite popular. They're showing us another alternative, which is to move the filter over here, and now they're calling this a flow, a full flow filtration system because all of the charge flow, regardless of whether it's uh, going over the relief valve or not, uh, is getting filtered. So it's going to go through the filter and enter through the charge check valves, or it's going to go through the filter, and if not needed, it's going to, over 200 PSI relief, it's going to enter the, uh, the case. But either way, it's getting filtered. Um, here, uh, we don't have any pressure protection, though if the filter gets plugged, when it was over here, the, the charge relief was also acting as our filter uh, restriction uh, protection. Here they had to add another uh, relief valve, essentially parallel to the filter, in case the filter gets fully restricted. And then instead of damaging the charge pump, the oil could push over this relief into the reservoir. They're also giving us an option to move the filter to the suction. Not very practical for heavy equipment because, again, we could be out in cold weather and the oil could be too thick and viscous to want to be drawn through a uh, suction side filter and that could cavitate the charge pump. So this is less common on mobile equipment, but quite often the, it's, this is found in industrial uh, hydrostatic systems where they're inside a heated building. So just to review those concepts, we've got the suction location for the filter, a full flow location with a uh, filter relief installed, and a partial flow location where only the, the oil that's literally going to go into the charge loop is going to get filtered, which is really the only necessity uh, on, on filtration. We really only need to make sure the oil's clean that is literally going to enter the drive loop. So this is probably the best location for and the simplest location for heavy equipment. We don't need a, a, a filter relief because the charge relief is going to take care of that. So we've got our system operating here and there we've got a warning that our motor is going to be overheating. Uh, one of the issues with hydrostatic drive, closed circuit or closed loop hydrostatic drive, we're using the same oil over and over and over and over in this this closed loop and because there's maybe in some systems only a couple of gallons of fluid uh, hydraulic oil traveling between the pump and the motor there's not much opportunity for that oil to get cool and it can get it can get very very hot very very fast so um, they're showing the motor getting hot but the pump's going to be getting hot all these hydraulic components are going to be heating up and we can melt o-ring seals and, and do all kinds of damage to uh, metal components as well so what they're going to suggest we put in here is a loop flushing system which is going to uh, consist of a, a loop flushing valve which is going to have two parts to it a flushing shuttle valve here a spool valve called a flushing shuttle valve and a flushing relief and sometimes this flushing relief is called an operating charge relief and basically the same function as the neutral charge relief or what we were calling the charge relief but you know, sometimes we're going to find this relief as the neutral charge relief maintaining charge pressure at 200 psi and then we'll have a flushing relief 
which will likely be set at 180 or 190 PSI if this one's set at 200. And it's going to manage our uh, charge pressure on the return side of the loop when we're flushing. So if I zoom in on this flushing shuttle, we can get an idea of its operation. If we're in forward and high pressure is on this side of the drive loop driving the motor, our return oil is coming out of the motor up here. We've got a pressure differential. The high pressure, because of the load on the motor, it's going to push that shuttle valve up working on this effective area. Often there's light springs in here too, but this one's just showing it without springs. So the, sh the flushing shuttle has been pushed up. This land is sealing high pressure from going anywhere. All high pressure is doing on this end of the shuttle valve is shuttling it. The return oil out of the motor that's going back to the suction side of the pump has the opportunity now to cross the opening here of the spool, the notch part, and go to the loop flushing relief. And because this is set 10 or 20 PSI lower than our charge relief at the pump, this is going to start to control charge pressure because return oil here on this side of the loop, if you recall, is where we are adding our charge flow via the uh, charge check valves. So if charge pressure is being added to this side of the loop and oil is going to take the path least resistance, now our charge pressure is going to drop to the value of this loop flushing relief. And again, uh, some manufacturers, John Deere specifically, call this an operating charge relief because it starts to control charge pressure uh, in forward. And if I go into reverse, then this will become the, the top of our picture will become the uh, high pressure loop side of the loop trying to drive the motor in reverse. Uh, return oil coming back from the motor heading for the pump can cross the shuttle valve, go to the flushing relief. And again, this is going to control charge pressure in either forward or reverse. When I'm in neutral, because the shuttle itself is centered, uh, there's no oil able to, to connect to the loop flushing relief. So then our charge relief at our main pump, at our uh, charge pump, is going to go back to controlling charge pressure at a slightly higher value than it is or not when we're operating forward or reverse. So the primary function of this flushing relief, though, is not to control charge pressure. It is to make sure that some return flow from the motor here we're in forward we got return flow from the motor is flowing across the shuttle valve through the flushing relief and that adds flow to the case drain of the motor so by adding uh, case drain flow to the motor uh, through this path we're going to be dumping extra oil into the case that's going to help take the heat out of the motor uh, and then it's going to flush back towards the reservoir now on our Sunstrand unit in the main shop, this oil coming out of the motor actually goes around to the far side of the pump, flushes through the pump case, and, it, and takes heat out of the pump case as well. And then we've got one line heading back to the reservoir. So a slight difference from this animation to what we have in the iron. And then they're going to put a, a heat exchanger in here, an oil cooler. Uh, this looks like a, a water to oil type. Uh, heat exchanger they've used in this illustration but it could be a radiator type but some method of taking the heat out that we've collected via this flushing shuttle and flushing relief uh, we're going to then exhaust that heat and back into the tank if we've got a big enough tank reservoir here then we may just use the walls of the tank for our cooling so in this animation so far we haven't really looked at how this handle this forward neutral reverse handle is connected to the swash plate on some machines there's literally linkage connecting the uh, uh, pintle on the uh, center point of the swash plate and there may be mechanical linkage and the operator may be physically moving that swash plate to the forward neutral and reverse positions by hand the problem with that is uh, when there's pressure here on the drive side of the uh, system that effective area pushes on the surface of the pistons here in the pump and that piston tries to push the swash plate flat well a series of pistons as this is rotating and every new piston that comes around is under pressure it tends to want to push the swash plate back towards neutral so what you end up with there are systems that use mechanical linkage um, but on those systems, you generally the linkage has to have quite of a mechanical advantage over the swash plate, so the operator doesn't have to fight through the through the controls with uh, with the swash plate angle when the pressure in the in the drive system goes up. 
So what we're going to add here on this system is servo control. We're going to use hydraulics to move the swash plate. Give the operator a break. Uh, replace the linkage instead uh, with a servo control, basically a pilot control valve very similar to a pilot control valve in fact maybe identical to a pilot control valve that would operate a pilot operated implement dcv so they're telling us uh, we're going to add servo control here and they don't go into a lot of detail in this animation but here they're showing a double acting hydraulic cylinder uh, that can uh, hydraulically shift from from pressure sent from a pilot control and down a, hose, down a set of hoses to a double acting cylinder. We basically just sent pilot oil to, uh, to the bottom side to shift the swash plate this way to, to reverse, uh, send pilot oil to this side of a servo cylinder to push the swash plate to forward. So this particular pump they're showing here is using one single double acting uh, servo. The one we saw in the main shop uses two single acting uh, servo cylinders that push on linkages on either end of the swash plate, but the, uh, the end outcome is the same. We're, we're taking that mechanical feedback of the swash plate from pushing on the linkage, we're taking that away so the uh, operator can just operate a pilot control and use hydraulics. The source for that pilot oil or servo supply, as it may be called if it's a European system like this, um, is generally going to be charge supply. So we've got a medium pressure system already existing uh, from the charge pump where we've got 200 PSI or 300 or 400 PSI uh, charge relief setting here. Generally they'll just tee into the circuit right here, feed that up to a pilot control in the cab, supply the pilot control, and then two pilot lines for a forward and reverse will come back down and operate this servo cylinder at the pump. Sometimes a servo control valve is mounted right on the pump like our unit in the main shop and we've got a cable coming to it, or mechanical linkage coming to that, but then it's boosted at the pump. So again, we avoid the forces of the swash plate pushing back on the linkage, or in that case, a cable. I don't get too model specific, but some, some uh, machines will have quite a sophisticated control of the uh, servo cylinder that's moving the swash plate. And of course we can have electronic controls. Once we've got to pilot, then we can have electrohydraulic controls where solenoids are going to operate, uh, either directly send pressure into the uh, servo on the pump or a system like the Sauer Sunstrand one uh, where the um, electrical signal is going to move a small valve here, what they call a flapper valve, and that's going to change the differential of pressures on a pilot spool. And then that pilot spool is going to ultimately send pressure to a servo cylinder and move the swash plate. We can see that they're dealing with a little bit higher um, charge pressures in this system. They've got about 365, 370 psi charge pressure. Um, but this is basically the ba same system as far as the uh, as far as the hydrostatic drive loop goes. It's just the pump has been modernized here to to be controlled electronically. So if I go into reverse, this is sort of a integral uh, OEM specific uh, pilot control valve that mounts to the pump. The pump even in our main shop could be adapted to use a control like this where uh, instead of uh, mechanical linkage and cable, it could be controlled electronically. Here's a unit, uh, it's basically the same pump that we've got in our main shop. Uh, same series of uh, of hydrostatic drive pump and on it we can see there's a valve here with some solenoids and wiring and this is basically going to control the pressure to our two single acting servo cylinders this was mounted on the front of a uh, truck a, a concrete mixer so it's driven off the front of the uh, crankshaft of the engine through a u-joint and then um, hydrostatically driving the, the mixer drum so the installation looks like this and this is just a shot of the hydrostatic motor driving into the uh, the geared unit that drives the mixer on that truck. And uh, the flushing shuttle valve is actually under this plug in the bore here on the uh, on the unit. And the flushing relief is here. And there's a speed sensor they've got picking up the speed of the drum for the control system. And 
case drain off the top here. 